and good evening uh, and welcome to this uh, latest edition of uh, Exchange for Media Dhanik Bhaskar webinar on how Bharat, uh, the non-metro part of India, is driving economic growth in, the, uh, in, in this country, especially how things are shaping up post the festive season. And as we enter into a phase uh, uh, when India starts its, va its vaccination drive, as more and more markets open up, open up completely, I'm here along with my fellow panelists to discuss what is the shape of economic recovery India is going to see over the next few months and perhaps uh, beyond that? What is the state of, uh, what is the uh, qualitative nature of this econ uh, economic growth that we are likely to see? And as a result of that, what will be the impact of this growth on the media and marketing ecosystem? I have a very well balanced panel with me today. Uh, starting off, I have Abhinav Ayer, head of marketing for Muthut Finance. Thank you, Abhinav, for joining us. Uh, Thanks, Divya Karani, uh, CEO of Densu X, uh, Densu Age's largest uh, media agency. <coughs> uh, with me also Kakon Sekhi, Chief Marketing Officer of the Dainik Bhaskar Group. Welcome, Kakon. Shiri Shagrawal, Head of Brand and Marketing for Panasonic. Satyajit Senhupta, Chief Revenue Officer for the Dainik Bhaskar Group again. Last but not the least, and the panelists I envy the most, Mohit Joshi, sitting in Nanital. Hello, Mohit, and hello to all the panelists. Thank you for joining us. Before I uh, come to you, uh, let me uh, start by uh, reading some of the uh, some of the facts about uh, you know what's been happening in the. Let me uh, rewind to the uh, you know part of the COVID, uh, you know uh, infection. As we all know, uh, a lot of migration happened uh, back to uh, you know non metros outside of uh, people went back to their hometowns from the bigger markets to smaller markets. And a lot of white collared uh, workforce has continued to stay in those towns because a large number of corporates still continue on a work from home policy. Uh, metros, as we all know, had a far more severe load as compared to non-metros. Hence, uh, and uh, that was also driven by the larger population density. So the impact of uh, COVID and the lockdown on the metro market was uh, much more uh, severe. Uh, newspaper circulation, if we talk about that, uh, in the metro markets, I think was far more hit. The pickup in uh, non-metro markets of newspaper circulation was much more faster, rapid, and uh, came on uh, online much earlier. I'm told uh, circulation, especially in non-metro uh, non market, is now back to normal, back to pre-COVID era. GST collection growth in non-metro markets has been leading the metro markets. In fact, it's been leading national average. A uh, large number of uh, blue-collar workers are also not yet back to metros, primarily because the ones who left are uh, unfortunately not able to fully find jobs back in metro markets. So that's one of the reasons why uh, the economy in non-metro markets has continued to uh, you know, grow because of con uh, growth in consumption. The other very important aspect is agriculture this year did well because of good monsoon. And agricultural economy, as you know, is also uh, uh, also remained uh, very uh, lesser uh, impacted due to COVID. And uh, because the non-metro markets, the Bharat, as we call it, is also uh, very dependent upon agriculture. That was one of the reasons why this uh, non-metro markets grew. Last but not the least, uh, I think the other aspect of growth in uh, non-metro markets has been a large amount of population being employed in uh, government jobs also. And what that does is that uh, the, uh, the the kind of job losses or income losses that we uh, saw in the private sector in the large metros, the same impact has take place in the smaller markets. So I think these are the points that I will uh, start off with. Uh, let me start this conversation and throw a question uh, directly to Abhinav here. Abhinav, uh, you are part of, uh, you know, the BFSI sector. BFSI sector has had a very mixed growth story over the last few years. Uh, you know, demonetization was, was one of the uh, events that really gave a very big impetus to the BFS, BFSI sector. <laughs> you cannot remain independent of what is happening in the larger economy. It is kind of the bellwether for the, you know, entire economy in terms of people spending and saving money. And you uh, belong to a company where uh, you are lending out money to uh, people. What's been your experience, uh, say, post-COVID festive season, and how you how do you th see things uh, shaping up uh, from here on? Okay, thank you, Naval, first of all, for this opportunity. It's great to be on this panel and share my thoughts. 
Um, in fact, I would say that we are one of those companies which have less to complain. And uh, we're very happy to share that the last nine months have been pretty, you know, buoyant for us. And we have done pretty well, uh, whether it is on new customer acquisition or business as a whole. In fact, if I take a step back, even the year, the last year, pre-COVID, was quite challenging for many sectors. But for us, within the gold loan space, being the category leaders also, it's been a very, very good year. We closed on a high note with about 51% growth in our profitability. We grew from 2100 crores to 3200 crores in our PAT in the last financial year. And even during COVID, uh, post-COVID, if I say, we were one of the first companies to get back on our feet because being a part of essential services, um, we closed the first half of the year with a 29% growth in our profitability, about 30% growth in our book size. So I think uh, compared to most other impacted sectors or companies within financial services also, we have less to complain about. And bringing the context to the, the point that is in question about non-metros, um, I'm happy to share that we have traditionally had a very high focus on non-metro, semi-urban and rural areas. If you look at our branch network, we have about 5,330 odd branches spread across North, East, West and South of India. And more than 70% of these branches have always been in semi-urban and rural areas. So this new debate about whether non-metros have played a larger contribution in the economic recovery post-COVID, is that it's, it, it has always been that way for us. And that's largely driven because of the fact that India is one of the largest consumers of gold. So, you know, the global gold demand in India is India contributes to about 23%. And two thirds of that 23% originates from the hinterlands. So uh, there's a very logical connection why we have been present in the, in the rural semi-urban markets. 60% of my uh, staff members are based in these 70% of the rural markets. 55% uh, of our uh, new customer acquisition happens from the uh, non-metro markets. Surprisingly, even uh, obviously there is a huge digital penetration which is happening in non-metros. Non but even if you look at the number of app downloads for our online transactions or digital transactions, semi-urban rural markets contribute about 55-60% of those transactions. So any stretch of imagination, non-metros have traditionally been a very big uh, they have been the big boulders in the bucket for us and they've always helped us pull us the averages uh, another statistic which i find interesting to share with you is in the same sequence is that in the last two three years we have opened uh, about 250 odd branches and more than 85 percent of these branches are in non-metro semi-urban areas so fortune definitely lies at the bottom of the pyramid for us when it comes to non-metros and going forward uh, we only see this demand to only grow with passage of time because I also feel with the passage of time, it is getting more homogeneous. The, uh, you know, the economic wellness of people in semi-urban, rural, non-metro areas is also increasing um, as we see. The government is investing more uh, in, in, in developing those markets, whether it is through Mandir Mandrega or other things. So I feel that uh, the, the story is only going to continue for us. In fact, uh, you know, I have a personal anecdote to share. I was uh, with somebody last week who owns the largest uh, garment and sari store in uh, store in Raipur. Okay. And this gentleman uh, told me that uh, the impact of COVID in uh, Raipur has been minimal, especially on his business. The uh -huh. moment the lockdown, the first six weeks of lockdown were over, their sales have been booming right after that. And, uh, you know, the degrowth and the slowdown that we talk about in metro cities has hardly been visible uh, in the last uh, six, eight months in uh, these markets and uh, especially also because these markets are so integrated with agriculture, which has done really well. So okay. some of these, uh, you know, uh, the I won't call them small. These are, uh, you know, medium-sized companies based out of uh, non-metro markets. Uh, some of them have had the, their best year ever. Okay. Uh, unlike the conversations that we have in, you know, the major markets where, you know, we've had uh, growth. The metro markets, you mean? Markets are really uh, booming very well. Kakon, let me come to you since uh, you know you're part of a company that has its uh, spread across uh, a large number of markets across India, and you truly represent in many ways what's happening across uh, Bharat. Tell us uh, some of the non-obvious things uh, that uh, has have been missed out, especially by advertisers when they when they look at these markets. One of the things that has happened over the last many years, and uh, 
uh, perhaps that uh, will get corrected because of covid is over indexing of english right especially when it comes to media option do you think that uh, has changed due to covid and is that change here to stay uh, hi um, to everybody uh, thank you very much for having me here uh, question uh, in fact one of the uh, i would that one of the biggest um, results let's put it that way uh, which has come out of this whole covid uh, pandemic uh, related to media is uh, the fact that um, somewhere uh, the uh, the the whole uh, you know intensity of covid was very big as we have discussed in the in the metro markets and uh, in the non metro market the intensity was much less the markets are different we've discussed this uh across several forums again uh the way in which uh, the metro markets uh, they went into a, a very long uh sort of lockdown and uh, what happened in print in and particularly in english predominant in metro markets is that it was unavailable for a long period of time so what happened is that people moved on uh while uh, they moved on to other uh other mediums uh, particularly for example if i am reading the times of india and i am saying this personally for myself and since i didn't get the newspaper at home i actually started uh, i got onto an app and i started reading it and when finally the lockdown was over and the distribution started i did not get it back because i by, by then started reading it online and i didn't uh, you know kind of uh, a uh, restart the whole uh, and this happened not just to me it seems that it happened to a large number of people so much so that uh, this uh, big hiatus was there a change in media habits in terms of english newspaper reading uh, compare that to what happened in the in the non metro markets and, and i want to uh, uh, say this that non metro markets are basically in, uh, you know while we tend to say rural but under about tier 1 tier 2 tier 3 tier 4 markets because these are the markets and i'm well versed with those because where we are you know our footprint is the uh, uh, the intensity was less people are different there the social fabric is different there the lay of the land topographically is different in these markets they are flat as compared to vertical in the uh, metro market the uh, uh, fact the circulations not just then in baskar i'm talking about almost every uh, big national uh, you know an indian language newspaper whether it is malayalam manorama or whether it's matrubhumi inadu dainik baskar daily jagran anyone uh, all of these guys who are you know uh, language indian language newspapers in these markets there was practically a bounce back within uh, less than a month Uh, the circulations today are, uh, you know, almost close to uh, anywhere between eighty-five to ninety percent, depending on which market you are in. Uh, simply because, and that, and the fifteen, ten percent, fifteen percent is because some bit of cash, is some bit of uh, office copies, some um, airport copies, you know, uh, services which are uh, train services are still not completely there. So those kind of copies are. You know, so once that comes back, this is also. but yes so this is what we learned and that we were able to come back really fast the the habit which is a, a newspaper continues to be very strong in fact today's um, very interesting whatsapp ad when you look for an and prabhakar munkur's uh, you know what more uh, who do you need yes that is an old friend whatsapp uh, through print yes. so uh, yeah we well, well done because when it comes to um, you know this whole trust i'm uh, uh, i'm very um, you know uh, i feel that there should be a metric there should be a trust index there should be a trust metric because that environment is very important for advertising so um, having said this was the lay of the land this is what happened in covid the fact that uh, indian language newspapers became um, Uh, you know they were able to come back really fast they were um, uh, the circulations were back and i think that um, advertisers have reaped the benefit of that um, as well across some of the biggest categories like uh, four wheelers two wheelers consumer durables 
education, so on and so forth. Absolutely, uh, Kakon. In fact, that uh, point can not be emphasized enough. I remember during the uh, peak of the lockdown curfew, a lot of uh, uh, news was being floated around about uh, you know various areas uh, being uh, put under containment zones, and I very vividly recall uh, telling my family members, friends to only trust uh, news that came from a credible source and which would invariably be the website of a newspaper and not go by you know unknown right. sources or WhatsApp forward. So I think yeah. that's a very very important point. Uh, the uh, the the second part of that story is how the newspaper industry capitalizes on that. I think that's very important. And like you made this very relevant point, uh, WhatsApp has finally relied on uh, the newspaper to get their message out as far as trust and privacy uh, is concerned. And I think there is a very important and strong message for brands there as well. Uh, let me now jump to Divya Karani. Divya, uh, you have a very good uh, ringside view of what's happening across uh, many sectors. I'll come to the you know, media and the trust issue uh, subsequently. But I want to pick you up first on uh, what's happening uh, across various sectors. And you, uh, as a company, work with brands across uh, various sectors. FMCG, FMCG, as we all know, has been a very big gainer uh, during COVID in terms of market share and uh, volumes. Uh, you work with the auto industry very closely and many other sectors. And uh, if we were to you know, specifically discuss the auto industry, auto industry has started picking up again. November was a good month for the uh, sector. And I remember reading a few reports uh, in November and December, which spoke about how uh, you know, companies like Maruti, companies like uh, you know, Hyundai are now seeing uh, growth come uh, very significantly from the non-metro markets. Do you think this growth is here to stay? And uh, will that change the composition of the economic metrics of these companies uh, going forward? Too soon to say, Naval. So thank you. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me here. Uh, couldn't agree more with Abhinav as well as Kaj. Uh, smaller towns, there is attraction, but it is in very many ways driven by specific trends that have been around for the longest of time. Media itself has been a great leveler in very many ways. Uh, digital, uh, mobile, digital, right? So the consumers in our metro versus non-metro, uh, yes, there are nuances, but it's becoming more and more, almost, almost uh, on parity. So that's one. Second is markets themselves. If you look at, um, you know, very many ways are non-metro mimic metros. It's not as if they don't. Give us a and uh, if you look at, uh, you know, yes, absolutely, they mimic the metros and in some cases even surpass it. All you need to do is look at the two-wheeler industry and we work very closely with a number of OEMs in that sector. And uh, you will find that two-wheeler penetration transcends right across even to rural India. So that is two wheelers. Television, ditto, almost, almost, right? The other bit in reading the data that we do, uh, yes, given the uh, lower penetration so far of other durables uh, and consumables in the smaller towns, there's that much more headroom for them to absolutely marry into a smaller base and you will find that the percentages are what they are. So, you know, we deal with data, but in dealing and reading data, uh, I, would, I would caution that A, the base effect and the headroom, number one. I would also caution, uh, you mentioned it and Abhinav mentioned it and I think so did Kakon, sifting the changes from what, which are sustaining trends versus which are perhaps an, uh, you know, an outcome of the metro lockdown uh, uh, married with the agriculture uh, uh, upsurge. So any, all of us, instead of just jumping one way, we need to carefully monitor what is happening. So yes, you're correct. And I'm agreeing with both FMCG, autos, both four-wheelers and two-wheelers, uh, even tractors 
have all seen an upsurge in demand from smaller towns. Uh, so that, that is there. Is it a sustainable and which ones are sustainable? We need to wait and watch. Great point. Uh, let me now jump to uh, Shirish, uh, who is part of uh, the Panasonic team. Uh, Shirish, if I were to pick you up, uh, you know, first two quarters were extremely tough uh, for the consumer durables industry. Uh, and uh, the prime reason being uh, retail outlets, outlets were completely shut. Growth has started picking up. Festive season was okay, but the industry has still seen grow, uh, degrowth in 2020. And the uh, economic pickup will be slow uh, going forward in the next one and two years. Uh, having said that, uh, tell us what are the changes in the uh, growth metrics or the composition of growth that uh, the industry has seen, uh, especially Panasonic. And if you were to look at how the weightage between the metro and non-metro markets was uh, for companies like yours pre-COVID, and how is it likely to pan out once we are fully out of uh, COVID? Sure, no, thanks. I think if I talk about the consumer durable se sector, I think our sector was one of the fastest to bounce back, uh, you know, in the new COVID normal. Uh, if I have to give you some data point, uh, you know, when the lockdown started easing, okay, and the market started opening in July and August, you know, we saw a growth of 20% in terms of sales. And as the festive season ended with Diwali in November, you know, uh, we witnessed a growth of 35% across all categories. Uh, you know, and why this growth was coming, if I have to summarize, there are probably three major reasons for that. The first and foremost was there was a pent up demand, you know, since people were not able to go ahead with their planned purchases during the lockdown phase. Okay. So yeah. as soon as the market started opening up, they went ahead and they bought the devices. Okay. The second reason was like the, we also mentioned, you know, in consumer durable category, barring television, you know, where you still have a 65% penetration, the penetration of categories like refrigerator, washing machine, AC is very low. You know, uh, refrigerator is almost 35%. The moment you go to washing machine, it drops to 14%. AC is less than 5%. Microwave is not even 1%. Okay, you know, so now what has happened is, now there are few needs which are universal. You know, you cannot categorize them only for tier one and tier two. What I mean by that is, there is a need for convenience. There is a need for comfort. There is a need for multitasking. There is a need to be entertained, right? Now, since people were, you know, confined to their homes, you know, and with limited or no domestic helps available, I think they had nothing else to look forward to. I think they all were looking for appliances that can ease their life. I think so they, they realized this need, especially in tier two, tier three towns, and they went ahead and did the purchases. Now, the trend that I'm talking about, what we are seeing here is, you know, while tier one markets, we see people focusing more on premium range post this COVID. So, you know, in tier one markets, 50 inches is a new 40 inch now. Okay, people are looking for refrigerators in 550 liters and above. Okay, likewise, people are moving to fully automatic washing machines. Now, when you come to tier two, tier three towns, you know, there is a, a endeavor required from brands that they expand their lineup, which caters to the need of tier two, th tier three markets also. So, for example, we are, uh, you know, uh, expanding our range in the fixed speed window ACs. Now, there are these markets where you have frequent power cuts, right? Now, what this fixed uh, windows AC do does is, it maintains the temperature even if there is a frequent power cut. Likewise, in refrigerators, we are expanding our range in DC, direct cool. We also saw a potential of 250 liters in frost-free range. So we are working on that and bringing those products. Likewise, we have expanded our range in semi-automatic washing machines. I think the onus is on the brands to ensure that they come up with the products that appeal to this particular market because need is there. You know, everyone is looking for the comfort in their life and introduce them at a right price point so that, you know, you can convert those customers. And that's what we are focusing at for Panasonic. Fair enough. I think that's uh, very relevant, uh, especially the consumer durable sector. You know, some of the key sectors like auto, BFSI, consumer durables are really bellwethers of the economy and growth coming back in the sector is, uh, uh, is good. <clears throat> and I think what has also changed uh, uh, because of COVID is uh, more and more Indians have dipped into their uh, saving, right? Uh, so spending Absolutely. is not necessarily bad for the economy. You know, they might be dipping into their savings, but uh, what spending does, even if it is driven by savings, is it become it brings economic activity, economic growth back, and creates opportunity for you know future uh, generation of surplus cash. So in that in in that sense, it's a it's a good development. Let me now. It keeps, uh, the, wheel, it keeps the wheel rolling. It keeps the wheel rolling. Actually, that's very Absolutely. important. Yeah. No doubt. Let me now go across to Mohit. Uh, Mohit, uh, uh, good to have you on the panel. 
uh, you again uh, work with a company which uh, has a very uh, good uh, you know all across view of uh, many sectors uh, you work with uh, some of the marquee clients in the uh, food space in the auto space uh, and some of the other sectors tell us what's been your experience of uh, working with some of these clients in terms of how growth has been coming back for them how do they see how do they see the composition of growth changing what is their view uh, of uh, you know how things will pan out in 2021 with respect to growth coming from uh, you know metro markets versus what we uh, call as bharat markets thanks naval so uh, yes you're right uh, the kind of clients that we have uh, also give us a good feel of how the uh, the growth has has uh, come back and uh, uh, as devya has already mentioned the auto category we handle hyundai kia we realized that the the growth that happened uh, post uh, the lockdown largely came from tier 2 tier 3 cities for them a big amount of growth happened from there not just the auto category but even philips lighting you know something which is not the the, the you know the bharat kind of a brand they saw a lot of uh, uh, growth a big amount of growth happening from from tier 2 tier 3 voltas voltas beko while voltas uh, the acs uh, they lost the first uh, season which was the april season but uh, you know the second season in october they they saw growth happening from the tier 2 tier 3 cities voltas beko uh, i mean uh, uh, shri sp- uh, spoke about it and i completely agree that you know uh, those num- those uh, uh, penetration numbers are very small but again that gives the headroom as uh, divya said and and the numbers uh, apparently uh, voltas beko did the largest and highest numbers till date uh, uh, and 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 70% of that came from tier 2 uh, tier 3 cities now I, i not just those but i would also uh, talk about a few of the uh, new age clients like swiggy we handle swiggy and swiggy went uh, down to 20% of pre covid uh, uh, you know uh, uh, bookings at one point in time then they then they significantly gained the numbers and that gain also a, sign- a, a, a significant component of that gain came from tier 2 tier 3 cities oyo rooms again a client which is across uh, you know uh, across the country so a huge uh, 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 traction coming from tier 2 tier 3 three cities and finally i would say some of the startups that that uh, you know got i would say they 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 really got uh, uh, lapped up at this point in time like hatabook phone pay uh, M- uh, mpl dream 11 their growths also came a lot from the smaller towns and cities i'm sitting right now in a tier 2 city myself and i realize that things have changed here completely Uh, the last time i came to nenital there was no concept of online delivery but today you have online delivery happening over here and i don't have to go to 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 the market at all so things have really changed and i'm feeling it myself so uh, i would say that this uh, bharat growth or the tier 2 tier 3 city growth is there to stay right uh, because metros anyway i feel have been saturated the competition is huge the the you know the the complexities of the consumers is also huge over there whereas when you come to the tier 2 tier 3 cities uh, it's it's more about you know the, the availability of the brands the simpler narrative that the brands can give them the after sale service relationships all those uh, have a big uh, uh, you know element in in terms of converting the the sale so in my view uh, even 2021 should see a good amount of uh, contribution coming from the tier 2 tier 3 and the bharat the uh, cities of of india i think well uh, well put with uh, especially examples of various categories though there's one point where i vehemently differ with you uh, nenital is not a city it's heaven so <laughs> <laughs> but i just looked at the i just looked at the you know the population and the 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 you know where it comes so it comes in tier 2 city <laughs> i am technically correct <laughs> okay tier 1 tier 2 it's neither a metro so did you let me come to you uh, Yeah. Uh, welcome to the show. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you again have a very good quality view of what's happening across. Uh, actually, you are in a very uh, you know envious position where you have a view of what's happening in the metro markets as well as non-metro markets primarily because there's a lot of clientele of yours which is based in metro markets, the large corporate clients as we like to call them, and you also have clientele which is based across this huge swath of uh, you know uh, Bharat markets, so to say. there are some of the insights you we know what's happening in corporate india uh, how uh, growth is shaping up uh, what is happening with their advertising spends tell us some of the uh, key aspects of uh, change in uh, 
you know advertising patterns you've seen when it comes to the smaller markets we know growth is coming back all right but are they also back to spending to pre covid levels yeah so uh, as you you know started by saying let me talk about the non obvious thing so very clearly you know what uh, one has seen in this entire period of the pandemic is that uh, many advertisers and uh, you know these were advertisers who looked at the entire country and they were advertising in the metros and the non metros as well but what this period did was many of them had to forcibly look beyond the metros because you know spends were just not happening in the metros and the you know beyond six metro kind of markets were coming back much faster so they were forced to look at that and uh, you know uh, and of course as as uh, most of uh, our colleagues on this panel told us that the non metro markets responded very well uh, be it auto fmcg be it uh, in both four wheelers two wheelers be it durable mobile phones everything has to, you know seem to have sold much better in the non metro over the last few months but what we took out as as you know a publication sitting in the metro looking at corporate clients is that what uh, our advertisers are now looking at is a huge potential out there which they were probably not focusing on earlier correct and it is it is a market which has opened up and you know people are really and as shirish said very rightly you know people are looking at that market customizing products for those markets now looking at what kind of needs are there trying to understand those markets better so i think you know what what this does for us and where it when where we come in here is how do we facilitate that understanding better you know as as a large publication which has worked in the market beyond the metro how do we facilitate that uh, you know understanding for advertisers and therefore give them a higher return in these markets because you know that's what ultimately people are looking at deliveries in the market beyond the metro and uh, you know a, a big way of sustaining the trend of you know you know metro to non metro or whatever we wish to call it the bharat part of it is to give the confidence to advertisers that once they move beyond the six metros there's a huge market which they're getting deliveries from so you know that's that's exactly what our endeavor is what we also uh, saw and we were pleasantly surprised to see is that uh, print and especially you know the newspapers that we represent has been delivering huge response and you know this this uh, these few months also uh, made us work with advertisers in a different way because advertisers obviously came up and said you know we don't have the kind of budget we used to have you're not selling help us so we also devised certain new ways of you know going about uh, providing solutions we measured responses we looked at the kind of sales which were happening and you know pleasantly surprised to see that in category after category print was really delivering and i can give you examples smpg auto two wheelers four wheelers uh, we went to the level of tracking how many calls came in from an ad released in the newspaper to you know looking at how many app downloads happened when an app for, you know ad was given even mobile phones we tracked you know if a jacket came how many mobile phones got sold etc so we also you know understood our own markets our own products much better it is now up to us how do we translate this entire understanding this entire delivery mechanism this entire solution piece uh, you know go and talk to advertisers and give them this market present it and you know make them uh, utilize this potential in a much better way fair enough a very interesting point uh, divya let me uh, jump across to you and uh, talk to you because you uh, through densu uh, for a large set of clients you invest a lot of uh, money across various media options and as i mentioned at the beginning uh, and this is not new this is not covid uh, this is pre covid story oh. where a lot of focus uh, when it's come to media as well as brands and hence spending has been on vernacular markets so to say uh, the non english markets uh, the non metro markets uh, we've seen a lot of uh, media consumption trends uh, changing uh, because of covid of course print was very hard hit uh, in the initial stages a lot of uh, you know traction was built into digital digital itself has been uh, trying to build this vernacular story over the last few years uh, and we all know the benefits of print there is no doubt about that there is a younger population which might not be so much into print but there is a set of population Uh, which has grown with print uh, which has money to spend which is a well paying population which reads print and as we were discussing uh, trust is a very important factor when it comes to using print uh, so there are mixed factors uh, but uh, nobody can deny i, I recall uh, in the month of august we uh, uh, we uh, did the uh, you know mid year annual review along with medicine where we said print is likely to uh, uh, have a degrowth for the entire year uh, in the range of 20 20 odd percent 18 to 20 percent and i think if you look at where we stand today that number uh, remains very valid uh, we are doing the annual report uh, 
early next month and uh, some of the numbers tell me the the report is uh, still very valid so when it comes to uh, print usage especially in the vernacular language uh, bharat markets what is your uh, sense of where things are headed because you know print has been swimming against the tide uh, last few years there has been no doubt about that but are we getting too uh, swayed by what's happening in english press and not really looking at what's happening outside of english not really nabal uh you know you need to give um, marketers uh credit for reading the market because they close uh to what is driving their businesses right right so media mix is constantly evolving and you know uh, i mentioned this earlier on sifting and reading through at times contrarian trends is what marketers increasingly need to do and uh, you know it's never been a more exciting time to be either in marketing or media because it's changing so rapidly and so fast but just when you think you know that you know here is change and it's volatile and so on i find that the more you know that old adage the more things change the more things remain the same so therefore to kakon's point she was completely correct trust look at it we have uh media penetration increasing but a deficiency of trust media was supposed to be the uh you know bell weather of reporting as is what is and yet the more the penetration increases the more we see the advent of fake news x y z so managing these contrarian trends stitching together the ecosystem that's there to my mind it's much beyond just an english versus language debate no longer no longer we see uh, you mentioned the fact that digital also is going the language way of course it is look at the penetration that has increased right and the way we consume each media the way we consume print is com- completely different from the way we consume uh, tv or for that matter all kinds of social media one is for perhaps news and education the other and journals also so tv also has news but the other one is for entertainment and you would want to consume it in your own language perhaps even in your own dialect so it's not at all surprising that digital is now talking the language story so to my mind it 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 is balancing contrarian trends and i think there is room enough because our addict continues to be way lower than what the developed countries have right so it is balancing contrarian trends and i would imagine that there is enough headroom for everyone you're right print has been under tremendous pressure but i would then look at news brands and this goes back to kakon's stories you know earlier it is news brands have are the custodians of trust like never before they need to leverage that i do not think the news uh, brand owners have done so there there needs to be that and and the marketers will respond media will respond so that that to my mind is a main thing rest of course of all the trends digital has galloped ahead and it's here to stay i don't think there's any going back if at all the momentum will increase and you are very well aware you know given our foray densu has a huge uh, footprint in digital tech data right yeah. the future is becoming more and more personal it is too naval it is too mohit it is too kakon or satya ji serving what you consume beyond the fact that you are in nenital or bombay or delhi much much beyond that tailor making it and that is what data accords us today so that that is my response please uh, let me come to you consumer durables has been a sector that's uh, had print as a very healthy uh, part of its media mix uh, what, what what do you think covid will do to uh, that usage uh, i asked that question from uh, you know two angles one is 
as you said, uh, a lot of the growth is coming from non-metro markets, and print has uh, very good quality uh, penetration in the non-metro markets, and not just penetration; it also has a very healthy traction and engagement beyond just you know circulation. So, what does uh, that do to the spends of consumer durable uh, players on uh, the newspapers from a language point of view? and also from a you know entire change of landscape point of view post covid uh, with you know digital growth happening consumers also hooked on more to their phones and e-commerce and so on and so forth so first of all there is no denying of the fact that each and every medium or so to say a touch point plays an extremely important role in a consumer decision journey you know if i have to divide this decision journey into say simplest three forms or uh, three phases the first and foremost is a evoked stage you can call it a pre purchase stage okay second is the search stage and then you have the final purchase stage okay now which mediums you know work well in each of the stages television for sure works the best in the evoked stage you know the kind of reach that television gives there is no other medium that can meet that okay print also plays a very important role in the evoked stage okay and then i see print playing a very important role in the final purchase stage also because it can work like an announcement wherein you can you know flash the offer schemes at a uh, immediate go okay but when it comes to consumer durable you know the search stage is extremely very important you know there was a research by google and boston consulting group which says a consumer durable buyer actually spends 3 to 4 weeks of time before they zero down on any brand or a product that they have to buy now why they are taking so much of time when it comes to consumer durable category is a simple reason because you know they know when they are buying any such product they are locking themselves for a longer period of time you know when you buy a television or a refrigerator you know you're not going to change it for next 5 to 6 years an average life cycle of a refrigerator is 11 years okay so this research period is or search period is very critical in consumer durable category and these days this search is happening actually on digital platform you know so there is no denying of the fact that digital plays an extremely important role important. and it's not just it's not just limited to tier 1 towns these days yeah. tier 2 tier 3 also uh, you know if you look at i have this report of cantor 2019 the recent 2020 report is yet to come you know 2019 report says that in india you have 574 million internet users okay 45% of that comes from rural area you know which is roughly 274 million and still we only have 28% penetration when it comes to rural india in terms of internet and this data is going to change drastically when we'll see 2020 report just wait for that report because you know more and more people have adopted digital as a technology having said that i think i think uh, there could not have been a better uh, you know time to quote the report because i have been quoting this report in multiple forums and this report was done by den so divya is here and collaboration with exchange for media you know so i am referring to your 12 uh, 2019 report you know about the advertising spends you know it talked about you know if you look at the advertising industry overall overall advertising industry and you split them across touch points television takes the maximum share of spends which is 34% followed by print which was 29% and then you had digital 20% you know now where this report got interesting and you know i have been quoting it from last one year and i have done the selling to my internal team members also a lot you know the moment you look at industry specific data point and you look at consumer durable this data point changes completely digital takes the maximum pie of almost 38% of the spends followed by television which is 30% print is only 14% okay i am not saying that print is not playing an important role it's just that since the search period is so critical in consumer durable category digital takes the maximum share of you know spends having said that yes Uh, there is no denying of the fact i think akun mentioned at the beginning the kind of trust that print media brings that i don't think there is any other medium that has that trust associated with them and especially when you are targeting in uh, tier 2 tier 3 towns it's very important for you to speak to those consumers in their own language i think use of local language is extremely critical for brands to drive that culture that salience and that customer resonance i think print can do that job phenomenally well and you know as we expand our lineup and we are looking at opening up uh, you know and targeting tier 2 tier 3 towns i think we will also start start spending a lot on print uh, so yes to, i think i'll summarize i think each medium plays an important role you cannot choose and decide i think right mix of each medium will have a multiplier effect of whatever strategy that you are opting for yeah that's correct and uh, what is also important to remember as far as the consumer durable category is concerned the uh, role uh, the intertwined role that retail plays in that and retail is a heavy user absolutely. of print right absolutely uh, whether you have chroma or vijay sales and what they are driving is basically sales 
to a large extent of the consumer durables category so for search yes very important from uh, uh, from what you mentioned but eventually when it comes to on ground conversion you know print becomes a very very important part of you know the uh, uh, yeah when i say search i means the research is primarily happening on digital yes, yes. the final proof of concept will happen at the retail store no doubt about it but they are going well prepared at the store that's the point yes yeah yeah Akun, let me come to you uh, uh, before i you know do one last round of uh, questions and uh, take some audience cues uh, covid has changed the uh, you know media landscape significantly and uh, tell us uh, a few ways in which uh, print especially language vernacular non english print can take uh, advantage of this opportunity as that that has uh, you know been thrown open because you know the, uh, the what i the sense i get is the view is mixed some of the trends we see might be transient you know they might not be permanent in nature uh, the markets will open up completely post uh, you know covid employment opportunities in metros will be back Uh, the entire white collar uh, even the blue collar workforce which is uh, you know uh, is right now in non metro areas will back in big cities uh, economic activity will be back with a bang uh, things might uh, easily go back to the pre covid era uh, but this window of opportunities that has opened up for uh, you know uh, vernacular language newspapers what is the way for you to capitalize on that Uh, yeah it's a great question actually um, i'm trying to answer it uh, so uh, you know one of the uh, uh, first things that i want to talk about is that uh, the whole uh, you know today we are talking about un- non metro markets and and actually say, thinking of it as if it is some new subject matter uh, it is not it is Uh, i remember as a marketing person in this company running uh, an initiative which uh, which was predated i mean I, it started before i came into this company and for has been running as an unmetro uh, we used to call it unmetro uh, unmetro your mind we we would tell our advertisers that uh, this is these are markets which require your uh, attention uh, what covid has done for us is you know totally spotlight uh, the markets uh, because of the fact that this happened so it's it's not a new concept it just uh, has found its place uh, and and unfortunately through a pandemic uh, but uh, people uh, marketers were going where the audience was where the sale was happening so uh, they didn't at that point in time care whether it was metro or un metro jahan se danda aa raha hai wahan ja rahe and dhanda us samay aa raha tha jahan it was coming from the uh, non metro markets uh, because the met- so it has willingly put the spotlight on the massive uh, potential which uh, is something that needs to be uh, today we are discovering it even more because we've got these 9 months to look at the data that uh you know from the uh, non metro markets we are looking at it dissecting it uh f- for every uh, category possible right uh, uh, because suddenly this whole new market has opened up and hey uh, this is giving me numbers so let's understand it more i'm so glad that this opportunity came about so that's number one number two uh as sirish so rightly mentioned he said you know the need uh, has been discovered uh and it behoves the advertiser to actually feed that need and that point also was made by suresh and i so totally agree with uh, uh with this point that we need to feed that need we need to uh, divya talked about the fact that you know they are uh, non metro markets are uh, you know metros you're right because they are aspire they aspire uh, and today in fact if you look at some of your a big youtubers or the tiktok stars or any of these these are all not guys from the metros they're all coming out of uh, non metro markets so there is a huge amount of influencer activity which is happening uh, in the so i think the what covid has done is open the pandora's box to a completely new set of markets which we knew existed but weren't really because we were stuck on p1 markets and these p1 markets were metros so that's point number 1 number 2 i think what we uh need to do is uh, that uh, we need to uh, we need to understand and that's again been mentioned on this on this panel that uh, and so rightly believe that each medium has its 
you know, as its uh, play, it has its role, it has its work cut out at various stages of the brand's life cycle uh, and in the, uh, in, in, in the sales, uh, you know, ecosystem uh, in reaching the customer. I'm actually looking forward so that if advertisers have so discovered uh, non-metro markets and the smaller towns and cities of India, what about the government? I'm looking forward to the budget. Uh, for example, what will the budget, how will the transport network of this country shape up? How will we uh, deliver better goods and services across to these markets uh, how will the government's uh, you know spending policy uh, affect what uh, the consumers in these markets will gain from how will lifestyle indicators grow that's what i'm looking forward to because i think that this uh, trend uh, it's not a trend it's this discovery i think this this is here to stay and i feel that that not again when an advertiser be hung up on uh, p1 markets uh, they will be, they will want to know, they will drive us, they will drive their partners and their agencies to understand what is happening in the markets beyond the metros. Fair enough. Uh, since we have limited time, let me do one last round of questions. Uh, questions, And uh, uh, before we wrap up, uh, let me start with uh, Abhinav Ayer. Abhinav, 2020 uh, is a year uh, that a lot of us want to, you know, kind of write off from our books, so to say. Uh, tell us what does 2021 hold in store for us uh, uh, from, uh, you know, uh, people who are uh, part of this webinar, especially people from advertising agencies, from media companies, uh, from an advertising spends point of view. How do you see 2021 shaping, uh, shaping up? I'm not asking for growth uh, on top of 2020, but as compared to say 2029, will we have significant growth? Are uh, advertising spends going to be fully back this year? Are we likely to grow on top of 2019? So I said, um, I for one would not like to kind of do away with 2020 because it's been a great year for us and the industry within the gold loan segment and we have done well. So, um, but definitely to answer your question, uh, we only see the spends and the, uh, the growth from an AUM perspective, book size perspective to grow northwards. I see some recalibration happening on the market prioritizations for sure. Uh, when we look at non-metros, obviously that's a consumer who's actually uh, needs a greater awareness about better value propositions. And from an urban uh, uh, customer segment, it's the digital adoption, which is getting expedited, accelerated. So even when we as a brand look at these two markets, we are looking at launching new products like loan at home, where consumers in the uh, urban uh, elite would like to avail gold loans from the convenience of their home or would like to make payments online, online payments and kind of stuff. And when it comes to the, you know, uh, non-metros or the semi-urbans and the rural segments, that's where people have, um, from a product perspective, they're quite aware about how gold loans work. So there is no inhibition per se, because, you know, films like Do Because Amin and Mother India have done those contributions to our, to our industry for, for that matter. So there it's educating them with a better alternative, because as against a pawnbroker who's operating at 4 or 5% per month, uh, we are a brand which offers at a much lower rate of interest. And like many of my panelists here said, trust is something which is the bedrock of all relationships. And especially in a business like ours, where, you know, you're letting go of an emotional asset. It's not just a jewelry. It's an emotional asset. So trust is the bedrock of that relationship. And because of our network, because of our legacy of 133 years of presence, network, uh, I think that is one thing which we can take humble pride in. So uh, when it comes to media spends, uh, with all humility, I'll say we were the first ones to, uh, you know, uh, launch a campaign uh, right when uh, things were looking extremely gloomy. We uh, launched our campaign in the middle of May. Our first print ad went on the 6th of June. And um, uh, for us, it's, it's, it's remained the same. And it's only going to continue from here because, uh, like I said, our branch network, our customer base, our growth parameters, everything contribute. Uh, I mean, there's been no problem. We have been touch wood in a land of milk and honey. So uh, I only see, I'm an optimist and I think it's only going to grow from here. That's good news for uh, especially all the media owners. Satyajit, let me come to you. I know you are a listed company, so you can't really uh, make any uh, number, uh, you know, guesses publicly. But tell us a sense, you know, 2020 has been an extremely tough year uh, for print. Uh, naturally, you would see growth coming back in 2021. 
this year would certainly be better than the last year when do you see yourself getting uh, you know back to uh, growing on top of 2019 numbers so uh, as i said uh, you know we have uh, looked at the festive as well as december which was about 90% to 90 to 95 depending on states and you know which was market we looked at 90 to 95% of revenue coming back and when i say revenue coming back it means 90 to 95% of 1920 uh, so we are are definitely looking at uh, you know the next couple of months to at least come back to 100 and then take on the next financial year on a growth so that is essentially what we are uh, planning for uh, as i told you 2020 is, has been a period of great learning of course uh, looking at uh, you know how the first three months panned out and then we came back numbers came back uh, we did a lot of new things for advertisers so 2021 is all about uh, two things one is you know as more categories come back more uh, advertisers look at different uh, new kind of products. How do we capitalize on all that? How do we, you know, provide our best services? We have, you know, a huge print uh, reach, as you know, plus the, you know, the uh, the my SMPs, the digital piece. We are working on all of them together and seeing how we can, you know, uh, provide our best services to take these uh, new products to our uh, entire audience. And uh, point number two is, uh, which I try to emphasize is on the deliveries, because you know, the uh, advertisers should also have the confidence that you know, a, a publication like ours can actually deliver. And those deliveries, if we are able to provide on a sustained basis, I see no reason why this 2021-22 cannot be a year where we really do well and do grow on 1920. I think very, very uh, valid point, especially when uh, a lot of uh, data issues are cropping up uh, with regards to digital privacy issues, data validity issues. So I think print has an opportunity to take advantage of. Mohit, let me come to you. Uh, a very big basket of clients. Again, uh, our media spend is going to be fully back this year. Uh, naturally, uh, the uh, the constitution of spend will change, but uh, are you uh, likely to see growth in financial year 2022? Uh, is that growth going to be healthy enough to keep uh, your bosses happy? Uh, yes, Naval, definitely there's going to be a growth this year. Uh, in my view, it's a year of hope and we are all hoping and, and uh, we want this year to, uh, to give us uh, uh, back our, our uh, days of glory that, uh, that were there pre-COVID at least. Uh, the, the composition of the, and, and we have got positive, uh, I would say, indications from most of our clients saying that uh, 2021 for them also has a lot of hope and expectations and hence the marketing uh, uh, budgets should be back to what extent i really can't say at this point in time but yes uh, we are hopeful the composition of the plans or the the composition of the media would change i at, at havas we talk about meaningful brands and meaningful media so in my view 2021 is going to be a year of meaningful media and a year of meaningful and purposeful campaigns which will see more of regional content more of targeted content more mobile more vernacular more OTT and more targeted and trusted uh, kind of communication. So that's that's what I see uh, going forward uh, uh, as as a, as a you know as a as a, as a few pointers from media perspective. Right, uh, I uh, I personally I feel that um, just like everybody else, I'm filled with hope for uh, the coming year. Uh, I think. Um, as a, as a company, we continue to be, you know, it's one of the things that we learned over the last, COVID taught us very well, actually, that performance is, you know, I mean, I, I, I wish I could write my middle name as performance. So, Kakon Performance City. <laughs> so, uh, I just feel that it's that important, I mean, for uh, to, be, uh, to be able to bring value to what the advertiser wants. And there are different kinds of performances that are required. Uh, and uh, that performance is important to be proven. Uh, I hope that it will be a year where we will go more and more, uh, you know, uh, print is seen some Sometimes, as a uh, as a uh, as a uh, uh, a medium which is not pro performance pro, I, I wonder why. But uh, because uh, it's continuously uh, proving itself, and in fact, in the last uh, uh, 
uh, year, it's one of the things that we've taken up as a as a company and worked with advertisers because this was a time where uh, it was required to be proven that much more than you know perhaps earlier. Uh, so this has now become ingrained as a AD, as something that we need to take up uh, very seriously. As um, uh, you know, Satyajit as well was saying that this is de about deliveries. Uh, so I feel that uh, it's going to be. Uh, uh, a year ahead, which is going to be uh, more um, opened out. Uh, people will want to look at better budgets. They will want to do more uh, as the uh, economy is, eas you know, eases up, and uh, and we feel that we are able to handle the pandemic and see the end of it. Uh, hope that by the end of the year, it will be a different story that we'll be talking about. We all hope so. Shirish, uh, are you looking at spending significantly more this year uh, now that uh, you know COVID, COVID is hopefully largely behind us, vaccination has started, are you significantly more bullish for your CFO to be able to give you a lot more money? Absolutely. I think whatever early trends that we have seen in January, we are still seeing uh, exponential growth in categories like refrigerator, washing machine and microwave ovens. And I could not agree with Mohit more uh, what he said. Uh, like I mentioned, the penetration in the categories is low. And uh, so this 2021 is, uh, year is going to be a year of consolidation and you will see a fierce competition by all the brands present in this category. So we are also aiming for huge market shares and we hope that, you know, we'll go aggressive as far as marketing spends are concerned. So we are highly optimistic about it. That's good news for all the media owners. Divya, you get the last word on this. Thank you, Nava. 2020 has been a year of growth. have grown in 2020. 2021? <coughs> even more bullish. And how and why have we done that is simply because we have, you know, flipped the uh, challenge, which was all around into in very many ways, uh, opportunity. Uh, we've done that time and time and time again, across all our clients. So take mu the mutual fund industry, for example, the way we've taken the long term view, and you know, mutual funds were around for three decades, but look at what we have done with it for the past five years. Or for that ex uh, matter, what we've done with Maruti, so client, or for that matter, records. So what we've done client after client after client is taking the long-term view. We've managed to you know, convert 2020, which was in all very many ways as a challenge, into an opportunity. Spirit of reinvention, agility, Wonderful. how we maneuver the uncertainty. And we do this again and again. Uh, Siresh, you'll be happy to know the Denso Digital Report is going to be out next month. 4th of February, so block your time. Oh, uh, glad, glad to know that. Looking forward to it. So we are staying the course. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. Yeah. Thank you for uh, the bullish sentiment. I'm happy to end this panel on a bullish note. Unfortunately, we don't have time to take any audience questions. I would request anybody who might have questions to reach out to the panelists directly. Our team will be happy to assist. And as Kakon said at the beginning in our opening uh, note, uh, it is not uh, why Bharat anymore. Bharat has been driving India's con consumption story for a very long time. And uh, COVID has uh, shined the spotlight on Bharat uh, even more firmly and made sure that uh, India really looks at non-metro markets more seriously, uh, looks at uh, indexing growth, more growth coming from non-metro markets. And as some of the panelists uh, mentioned that because of lack of growth in some of the larger markets, per, per force, uh, a lot of companies have had to look at the non-metro markets and hopefully they're all uh, waiting to uh, find a gold mine there. With that, thank you to all the panelists. Uh, I wish you luck and I hope the pandemic is behind us. And we are able to see uh, each other in person. Uh, we are uh, thinking of planning our first ground event. Uh, at least we'll, uh, as an industry, have a get together. But we are waiting to see how the vaccination drive shapes up over the next three to four weeks. So I'm very hopeful that before uh, this financial year, uh, 31st March runs out, we might have an opportunity to meet each other. Till then, stay safe and uh, look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much. Thanks, thanks a lot. Thank you very thanks much. Thanks a lot. Thank, thank, thank you so much, thank everyone. Thanks, everyone. Thanks.